Community Music Center of Boston is a nonprofit music school in the city's South End that provides exceptional music education to individuals and groups of diverse backgrounds, ages, and abilities. Every year, the center is host to a unique concert series that pairs music from around the world with rich and diverse wines. We attended the most recent event, a pairing of Italian wines with a lively performance of traditional Italian music. The duet of Carmen Marsico and her husband Bjorn Wenas treated the audience to a beautiful recital, at times delightfully lively, and others heartfelt and mesmerizing. While the series is special for wine and music lovers alike, it is also a wonderful way to spotlight and showcase the center itself. Our host Kelsey Clark spoke with Claudia Hayden, who is the center's director of development and marketing, about how the series has done well to engage the center's benefactors and Boston's philanthropic community at large. How has this event attracted a different demographic in terms of students or donors or people um, interested in the community center? Well, we've had a lot of um, new folks come in uh, through hearing about us through different uh, wine channels, um, including yourselves. Um, but we've increased a lot of foot traffic into the center because of signage outside and the fact that um, the, the series is really create in such a way that it's pretty family friendly. The concerts are generally about an hour in length. They're free. The South End is a very active uh, community of lovely restaurants and bars and boutiques and things. And so people, there's a lot of foot traffic up and down Tremont Street. And we found that this series has really brought in a lot of new folks from the South End uh, who have chosen to either become students themselves or enroll their kids here. Um, especially uh, young moms with like babies and very young children will begin their studies here. And um, we've also found it to be a great cultivation opportunity for donors who see the value of the services we provide to the community and are also uh, then follow up with interest in the classes that we teach and the students who we serve. Presenting the wine of the evening was a great friend of the show, Joanne Ross. Joanne, who is a certified specialist of wine, gave the audience an excellent and informative tutorial on each of the wines served and how she worked with the center to come up with a pairing itself. Joanne, can you go ahead and tell me a little bit about your involvement with the community and your background in wine? Okay, I am on the corporation of the Community Music Center of Boston and it is a wonderful program. It services so many people in the South End community. And I've always been wanting to find a way to give back to the Community Music Center. So when Steve Yanger approached me about this idea of pairing wine and music, I thought it would be just excellent. How did you go about pairing the wines with the music um, this evening? Now what Steve does, Steve Yanger does, is he sends me the music sends me a list of the music, thank goodness for YouTube, because I find <laughs> everything on YouTube, right. and I listen to all of the songs tonight just to get a feeling about them. Then I think about the wines that I know of that are Italian, mm -hmm. and for example, the first set were sad songs, and right. what sad songs do I know? What wines do I know? What, what, what is the essence of sadness? Well, it's bitterness, it's sadness, it's anger, it's a nervous energy, it's, and listening to the songs, there was a little bit of a minor key to them, so I wanted something tart and acidic, which is what led me to the Verdicchio that we used. And it has kind of like a negative name to it, even though it just means green, it has that negative name. The second set, I wanted something happy and jovial and juicy, and that's how I chose the Super Tuscan with the Teraldigo and the Syrah. A little unusual, and I had help from my friend Martin Bergeron, who contributed the wines. The third set was really the best because it was romantic, yes, and I wanted the most romantic place I had never been to, which was <laughs> Pantelleria. Yes. So I used a Pasito de Pantelleria for the last one. That was easy. That was the easiest pairing. So we had such a great turnout tonight. Um, how do you go about attracting such a broad demographic of people? We had young people, old people, you know, mm. people who knew a lot about wine, people who didn't. So we started out when we did our first one, we had 10 little souls sitting there <laughs> listening to music and drinking wine. And as time has gone on, we obviously tonight had well over 40 people, yes. which thrilled yes. me. And awesome. we and Steve and I do this twice a year. We'll do another one in the spring. Okay. We're talking already about some ideas. Mm -hmm. We have to pick an area that has some wine. So even okay. though the music might be interesting, it okay. might be fun to do Chopin and do Poland. <laughs> 
there's no <laughs> wine in Poland. So, and I don't know too much about beer. Right. So therefore we're, we want to pick an area where there is a plethora of music and wine. We have decided that we're going to do them twice a year because it's really fun and it's yes. really out of the box. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You are this most welcome. This has been a fabulous evening. I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Indeed, the evening was a special one and we're very much looking forward to the next installment of the Wine and Music series. For much more information on this amazing program, visit cmcb.org or just stop by the center at 34 Warren Street in Boston South End.